Uh, Shirley Jackson is a great example of an author that I, I, th I think highly of. She can pack more creepiness into the first paragraph of The Haunting of Hill House than H.P. Lovecraft can in his whole oeuvre of, uh, you know, his, his material. That's just my opinion. <laughs> he is the glory maker genius behind cult horror classics such as Sleepaway Camp and Blood Rage. He's also done some mammoth movies like Terminator 2, Judgment Day and Terminator Salvation. He's also worked on some more underrated classics like Jack Nicholson's Wolf. He has an Oscar nomination plus an Emmy behind his name. Who could I be speaking about? Of course, it's none other than Hollywood's very own makeup ninja. <laughs> French. And today he's going to tell us about five of his favorite horror movies of all time and I promise you that this list is as classic as he is. Now if you enjoyed today's segment then be sure to check out the other segments in this very interview. It's well worth the watch especially if you're into horror movies or movies in general. Very very interesting and you'll find Ed French just like I did to be a very generous and fascinating guest. So hit that subscribe button, join in the conversation below, pull up a chair, hope you enjoy. Horror has gone through through many different eras. You've had a, a solid hand in the slasher era, but yet you speak about the, let's call it the golden age of horror. Because to be very honest with you, those are my favorite horror movies. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein, The yeah. Wolfman. The Wolf yeah, the pray, if, <laughs> if, yeah, there you go. You've got it up, you've got your wolf Wolfman thing there. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, oh, I got to close the door. The gardeners are here, my God. <laughs> you They're going to make you noise. Need to do it. You do I'm sorry. You need to do. Go for it. Ooh, go for boy. it. I got to close a couple of doors. You go for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that would be if there was a if there was a short list of horror films that I like. I mean, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Dead of Night. But uh, those would be that those would be at the top of the list. And what about the the horror movies out of the seventies? Like you were mentioning the The Exorcist a bit earlier. Yeah, The Exorcist is a frightening movie. Yeah. Another movie that I I love that to me is difficult to watch, especially when you get older, is called Seconds. Seconds was made in 65 or somewhere in there by director John Frankenheimer. And um, to me, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a frightening movie. I don't know if you're familiar with it or the audience remembers it, but it's, uh, it's a movie about a man who's so unhappy. He's a middle-aged banker. He's so unhappy with his life. It, the movie is the logic of a nightmare. It doesn't make any sense, but it makes emotional sense. This guy, he can't, he's, he's unhappy with his life. He wants to start all over again. And he, and he contacts a company called the company that can give him a new life. What they will do is they will fake his death and treat him with plastic surgery, give him a new identity, he can, he can, now he can, uh, you know, live this second life. It's called seconds. And of course, everything goes horribly wrong. It's, uh, it's also, it's based on a, a novel by a guy named Ely. I can't remember his first name, but uh, it's, it's uh, the novel's great. The movie's even greater. In fact, a lot of the stuff from the novel is used in the movie. It's a, it's a cult movie of its own sort. But I, but I tell you right now, I don't know when I'm going to look at it again. It's just, it's very disturbing. Seconds, yeah. I'll, I haven't seen it, but I'm certainly, I'm very yeah. interested to see it now. Highly recommended. Right. Highly recommended. I don't know how that'll mess up your sound. Uh, uh, you barely, you barely heard it. All good. They come every Thursday. I forgot. This is about the time they come. All good, Ed. All good. All good. That's what's lovely about technology is you can cut all of that stuff out, so... It doesn't need, necessarily need to be a horror movie, but what was the first movie that that made you go, man? This is what I want to do. I want to be. I want to be in this world. I I don't think it, it 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 dawned on me that it was possible to be a part of this, but I I longed to be a part of uh, the you know the entertainment industry, particularly when I saw the old Outer Limits TV show and some of the movies that began to uh, uh, dawn on me that uh, people were making these things and. You know, it looked like fun too. 
I know that doesn't sound like a great reason. Maybe it is a good reason. I don't know. I, I you know, I grew up in a very conservative little uh, town in, in New England, and uh, nobody could figure out what the hell to do with me. A uh, guidance counselor couldn't figure it out. Well, you're into art, so maybe you'll work at the print shop, you know? That would be it. And then I would go back. I got to do something. So, uh, like I say, uh, I, I was in, I remember I was in the drama club at one point in high school, and <laughs> but the teacher asked me, uh, what, why do you want to do this? Why, why are you interested in this? And I said, well, it just looks like fun. Now, now Ed, tell me a little bit about your, uh, your YouTube narration uh, channel where you narrate short stories and uh, all to do with the horror world. I mean, what, what got you into that? And what's the attraction? Frustrated actor. <laughs> You know, I'm still, I was, I'm still working as a makeup artist, a makeup effects artist, and uh, I really don't have the uh, the time or the ambition to audition. I did years ago. It's really a big, it's a, it's, it's a big commitment to do that. It takes a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of rejection. And uh, I, uh, the timing wasn't, wasn't right for that. But when I discovered that you could set up a, a audio booth in your own home studio there was no excuse not to do it and uh, i try to tell stories much like an actor as opposed to a narrator some of them are straight narration but a lot of them are a good excuse to try to try to just sit down and tell the story like you would tell a friend i, I didn't know about your uh, your youtube channel until you know we confirmed this interview and then i went back and started listening to it and it's really great i mean it, it sort of Thank takes you. me back to those old radio shows uh yes so, you know i don't know if that was yeah. your inspiration there but it certainly evoked that for me you know you can just sit and listen and you seeing the pictures in your head sometimes it amuses me greatly you know i i, I get a kick out of it i i break myself up sometimes you know yeah. and and some of the the, the the material is so different it's almost effortless uh shirley jackson's a great example of an author that I, I, I think highly of. If organism can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality, even larks and catadids are supposed by some to dream. Fear, the doctor said, is the relinquishment of logic, of logic. She can pack more creepiness into the first paragraph of The Haunting of Hill House than H.P. Lovecraft can in his whole oeuvre of, uh, you know, his, his material. That's just my opinion. And a lot of people disagree. They love H.P. Lovecraft. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think he works too hard. Mm -hmm. I like the, uh, the, the guys, the, 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 the writers like Shirley Jackson, who it seems effortless and they get under your skin, you know. Right, right. Yeah, she's got the, definitely got that very strong sense of, of, of gothic horror. What, what did you think of the series? Have you seen it? The, I did not see the series. I, I'm a big fan of the original movie, not big names. Again, mm -hmm. a good example of a movie where it's not the star power, it's the, the story that makes it, and it's a, it's a chiller. They're trimming the tree. It looks to me like they're cleaning out the gutter. My God, they're really going to town out there. Efficient, they're efficient. <laughs> oh, they are. Good man. Ed, I'm going to ask you a difficult question now, and I'm going to ask you your, uh -oh. your, your, your five top favorite horror movies of all time. Five top horror movies of all time. <laughs> you take your time, Ed. Frankenstein, The Bride of Frankenstein. Here comes the, the lawnmower. I'll wait for the guy to go by. <laughs> you can hear it. It, it sounded like Frankenstein actually it was in the yeah? background. All right. Let's see. Five favorite horror movies. Frankenstein, 1931. Bride of Frankenstein, 1935. Dead of Night, the horror anthology omnibus movie made around 1948. And um, Seconds, The Body Snatcher, uh, made by the great Val Luton. Uh, with Boris Karloff and Henry Danielle. That great, creepy movie with, a, with one of those dynamite endings that totally blow your mind. Did I do five? You did five. And it's all a right. splendid five, a splendid five. I recommend them all highly. Hey, everyone, that's a quiet for myself and Ed French. Next week, this conversation continues. 
Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman, these classics of the golden age of horror. These are going to be some of the topics that we chat about next week, and I promise you, Ed French has some incredible insights into these classics. So be sure to check that out. I wish you all a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay happy, and most of all, stay horror. Gaze into the abyss. <laughs>